Okay, uh, hello. Uh, to, uh, we'll talk now about a very interesting uh, non-architect, if I am to call him so, but who built uh, very interesting uh, uh, buildings. Shusaku Arakawa, Japanese, 1936-2010. Let's uh, read a little bit about him. Shusaku Arakawa, born on July 6, 1936 was a Japanese, he died in 2010, was a Japanese conceptual artist and architect. He had a personal and artistic partnership with the writer and artist Madeleine Jeans that spanned more than four decades in which they collaborated on a diverse range of visual mediums, including painting and printmaking, experimental filmmaking, performance art, and architectural and landscape design. Let's read a little bit about him. Throughout his life, Arakawa frequently infused his works with philosophical ideas that considered art's intrinsic functions, human perceptions of the physical world, and the language of signs, symbols, and visual meanings. These thematic elements were based on the writings and theories authored by key figures in science, philosophy, and art history, Leonardo da Vinci, Albert Einstein, and Ludwig Wittgenstein. Beginning in the 1960s, Arakawa's work attracted positive responses from the Western art world and led to his representation at numerous esteemed galleries and museums. And there they are, uh, Duan Gallery, Gagosian Gallery, the National Museum of Modern Art, Centre Pompidou, David Barnett Gallery, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Museum of Modern Art, and so on. Uh, Arakawa and Jeans, I don't know if I pronounce well her name, founded the Rever Reversible Destiny Foundation, a very idealistic and very naive uh, foundation, if you ask me. They try to arrest the, you know, the growing old, in, uh, in essence, in which they designed architectural sites that were aimed towards the longevity of human life expectancy. Moreover, they established the Architectural Body Research Foundation in 1987 as a non-profit research group that stimulated multidisciplinary studies with renowned biologists, neuroscientists, quantum physics, physicists, and medical doctors on the nature of life and death. Arakawa usually referred to himself by his surname only, which eventually came to be more commonly practiced by him during his career in the United States and Europe. Shusaku Arakawa was born in Nagoya on July 6, 1936. His family ran an udon shop. I don't know what that is. Arakawa spoke of himself as an eternal outsider. I like this. And abstractionist of the future, and was interested in a variety of disciplines, including art, mathematics, and medicine. The con convergence of his interests in multiple or multiple interests, seemingly disparate subjects, originated during childhood. One of Arakawa's neighbors was a doctor who offered the young Arakawa professional advice on proper training for a career in medicine. According to Arakawa, the doc doctor's wife, an artist, advised him to draw, which led him to refine his skills in both drawing and painting. Arakawa briefly attended Musahino Art University to study art. I read actually that he arrived as an immigrant in New York City with just a few dollars in his pocket and with the telephone number of Marcel Duchamp. And then he made it. So this was Arakawa, uh, a very interesting man. And uh, here he is with his partner, herself a very interesting person. And together they did remarkable things. Where there is love and there is collaboration and inspiration and nonconformism, uh, beautiful things could happen. So Shusaku Arakawa, we know, born July 6, 1936, was a Japanese artist and architect. We know that he had a personal, uh, this is just repeating the same information. Uh, this I read, uh, why did I write twice? Um, ah, here it is, Arakawa arrived in New York City in 1961 with $14 in his pocket and the telephone number for Marcel Duchamp. 
whom he phoned from the airport and with whom he eventually formed a close friendship. He started using diagrams within his paintings as philosophical propositions. Jean-Francois Lyotard said of Arakaba's work that it makes us think through the eyes. And Hans Georg Gadamer, a very important uh, phenomenologist, described it as transforming the usual constancies of orientation into a strange, enticing uh, game of let me see if I can read the last line because something is covering uh, is covering uh, the last continually thinking out enticing game a game of continuously thinking out said the uh, Hans Jörg uh, uh, Gadamer. But now, <laughs> uh, quoting Paul Salon. Gadamer also wrote of the work, there are songs to sing beyond the human. Charles Bernstein and Susan B. observe Arakawa deals with the visual field as discourse, model systems that constitute the world rather than being constituted by it. Arthur, Arthur Danto found Arakawa to be the most philosophical of contemporary artists. For his part, Arakawa declared, Painting is only an exercise, never more than that. Reversible destiny, Shusaku Arakawa and Madeleine Jeans, architecture against death. Here he is, and uh, we'll see a house they built for themselves, for Arakawa and Jeans. Uh, the ideal form of a house was one that kept residents in a perpetually tentative relationship with their surroundings. The more our homes challenge us architecturally, the more likely we are to stay young, grappling with their complexities. And in the case of Arakawa and Jeans, flats and houses, their sheer oddity, even perversity. The most extreme design, the Bio Sleeve House, 2008 in East Hampton, Long Island, New York, it took eight years to build and the cost and cost the couple two millions of their own money. Well, I guess they had some money. Beyond the $14 he came with to New York City in 1961, I think. This is the house, Bioscleve House, lifespan extending villa. They thought it is lifespan. Uh, lifespan extending villa. Um, unfortunately, he didn't die so old. Reversible destiny, the most uncomfortable house in the world, it was described. This locative architecture, I like this. The house where you live forever. Well, uh, the house actually is not so uh, spectacular, uh, uh, towards our side at least. Inside it has some interesting uh, parts like the dunes inside the, let's, let's call it living room. But I wouldn't describe it the most uncomfortable um, uh, house on earth. In fact, the very building I'm to I'm, 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 I am in right now is more uncomfortable than this. But it was not designed as such. Anyway, this is the house by uh, Arakawa and his partner. digital representation of the house. So it's in East Hampton, New York. Maybe some students of architecture willing to prolong their lives, to extend the longevity of their lives. So in essence, what they thought, what they said, was that discomfort could prolong one's life. Yes, discomfort. To the exasperation of the functionalist.
children who won't die are a cover. A dreamer, no doubt. But we need dreamers badly. And without them, life would be worthless. She was no doubt a remarkable uh, person. Maybe she's still alive, I, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, she, she was an important presence in his life. And uh, who knows, maybe some of this creativity actually originated with her. Behind we see a project they did together. We, we, we need these dreamers badly, really. I mean, without them, you know, everything falls into, into you know, predictability and the routine and actually death. And anyway, this is the house in East Hampton. And now reversible destiny lofts in Mitaka, Tokyo. Very similar to their own house in spirit and form. Lots of colors, the labyrinth. Now look how the building looks like uh, towards the outside. And these incredible Japanese, they continually experiment. And, uh, you know, uh, in most uh, parts of the world, probably such a building would not have been built. It was built in Tokyo. Why should the apartment build be, buildings be morose? Why should they be rectangular? Why should they be, you know, uh, only obsessed with uh, utilitarianism and so on? Why not bring joy to the, the art of living, if it is to be an art? Yes, an apartment building. It might be that the plants, the bushes, nature also enjoy the building behind them. It's very possible. Now, the site of reversible destiny, Euro Park. This is another very interesting work, and it's amazing that they were able to implement it in Japan. Europark, the site of possible library. Look at this, the most unusual library. I mean, we saw the library by uh, Juan O'Gorman in Mexico. Now we see the library in uh, this library by Arakaba and his partner on uh, in, in this park in um, in Japan. Perhaps the building symbolizes the, the never ending process of learning with its extending uh, canopy at the top that uh, has irregularities on the margins because uh, the, the process of acquiring knowledge is not linear, it's complex. And so maybe, you know, uh, such a, an interpretation uh, could, be, um, could be possible. 
the best way to get a handle on how a person is situated in the world is actually to construct one, a handle expressly, expressly made for the purpose. Shusaku Arakawa, in architecture, sites of reversible destiny. That is, uh, sites of, uh, of, of, of uh, the absence of death. This is the park. And again, it's incredible how they were able to coordinate uh, all these complex activities and even get the land in Japan, you know, for this fantastic work, which probably would have inspired Hieronymus Bosch. Bravo, bravo to them, the library, the most unusual library by these artists, philosophers, poets, architects. The labyrinth. <clears throat> You have to go through the labyrinth in order to, uh, you know, attempt to arrive at, you know, a partial knowledge. If you don't assume the labyrinth, uh, the chance you, you get uh, where you'd like to arrive is small. They have all kinds of fantastic structures here in this park. <clears throat> and as you can see, people enjoy it. Maybe you could call this, um, you know, uh, a future archaeology or, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the archaeology of the future or some kind of a, a fantastic uh, place, fantastic uh, uh, park, fantastic architecture that uh, <clears throat> explores uh, the unknown. And what is remarkable is not just their work, but also the society that invited such work and made it possible, meaning the Japanese society. Now, the building is not perpendicular on the earth. And why should it be? Reversible Destiny Foundation unrealized projects, a few. Look at this one. Is the building on the right straight and rectangular better? I don't think so. And they did this sort of thing, uh, you know, years before, uh, you know, similar attempts somehow these days by big and other architects to make mountainous uh, housing uh, complexes and so on. Again, the presence of the labyrinth is, uh, is, uh, is pregnant and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, generating a variety of, uh, of surprising, uh, surprising architectures. That's all, so thank you. <clears throat>